right, welcome to video number two. This is Janet with Paper and Spark, and in this video, I'm walking you through how to enter inventory into your inventory spreadsheet for resellers um, if it's purchased from a prior year to right now. There's gonna be a few special rules for how to do this. You can think of this process as setting up this year's beginning inventory for yourself. So take some time to find all of your receipts and documentation for inventory that you bought from a prior year to now and let's get started. So in my example, I'm going to say that I am reselling clothes, right? Um, and I've got my scarves tab open and I'm going to enter some scarves. So let's say that this is 2017 and I have some scarves that I purchased back in 2015. The first thing that I want to do is enter my original date of purchase. So I'm going to say that I bought some scarves on 331. And it's an infinity scarf. You, I mean, these columns are pretty self-explanatory. Just enter, um, you know, the description, color, size, you know, you can rename these columns to be more applicable to you if you want. There's no rules with that. And um, I'm just going to do that. Okay, so let's blank these out so we can start fresh. All right, so the next step is to enter the total cost of whatever this item that you're entering is. Now when I say total cost, I mean include any discounts that you got, include any shipping that you paid, include any sales tax you might have had to pay, hopefully you didn't, hopefully you were able to buy it at wholesale. Um, you want to enter the total cost of what you actually paid, and when I say total cost for prior year purchases, I mean the total cost of what you have left. So if you bought 20 scarves back then for three dollars each so 60 bucks of scarves total but you only have 10 scarves left then I want you to enter the cost of those 10 scarves all right not the whole cost that you paid back then just the cost of what is left so I have thirty dollars I have 10 scarves left at three dollars each so thirty dollars is my total cost and then in the beginning year units, I'm going to put how many scarves I have. So that's going to be 10. Now, I'm not going to put anything under the quantity purchased this year because I did not purchase these scarves this year, right? I purchased them back in 2015. And then the key here with the prior year inventory, which is going to be a little weird, it's going to feel a little weird, I want you to override the formula in this cell. Okay, the formula in this cell is, is actually looking at column I, which is going to be useful going forward, but we're not putting anything in there right now for these prior year purchases. So you have two options. You can totally override this formula by just typing in the cost per unit. And in my example, like I said, we bought um, 10 scarves for $3 each. So I would just enter three, and that, that's all I need to do. If you really don't like um, hard keying in an actual number here and you want to still use a formula, I'm going to hit undo. You can click this formula, click the formula in the formula bar, and just reset it. It actually needs to be the total price divided by your beginning your unit, so I'm going to click this and drag it over and now it's G divided by H and it's still gonna get me three. Alternatively, if you don't wanna move the cell like I just did, I'll undo again. You can type in the formula yourself if you feel comfortable doing that. It's a very simple formula. So you would just hit equals and then you'd say my $30 cost divided by, which is a forward slash, my 10 units gives me three. So that's three different ways to do the cost per unit. All right, after you get that set up, you want to leave your unit sold this year blank because this is what we're going to update going forward once we start selling some of these scarves. Personal units, columns are blank unless you end up later on taking a scarf out for personal use. And you'll notice that these pink ending units columns are going to update on their own. So this is saying, hey, 
we've got 10 of these brown 2015 $3 per unit scarves left in any inventory, which is correct. And the cost of those 10 scarves is $30. So then as we sell them, this, these numbers are going to change. Let's enter one more example together. Let's, let's do something totally different. Let's do leggings. Let's say on January 30th of 2016, a prior year to now, I bought some heart leggings. They were pink. Uh, they're also one size. And let's say I bought 10 pairs of leggings for $100, but I am only left with 8 pairs right now. So back in the day, I bought 10 pairs for $100, and now I'm left with 8, okay? So 10 pairs for $100 total gives me a price per pair of leggings of $10 each, right? So that means that I currently have $80, or 8 times 10, of leggings to begin with for this year. So I have eight beginning year units, um, nothing for the quantity purchased this year, and I'm going to adjust this formula to be $80 divided by eight. Don't let all these extra columns scare you. Everything looks good, and that's how I set up my prior year purchases. You're going to see in the next video how you enter current year purchases so once you watch that, you'll be able to understand a little bit more about why we have to do it this special way. But I hope that that makes sense. It's really not too hard. Go through all your prior year stuff that you've still got on hand right now. Make sure you get it set up in your spreadsheet for going forward. And then join me in video three, where we will cover how to enter current year purchases.